Hello, everyone, and welcome to Valley Homes on TV. I'm Debbie and Par Giordano, along with Todd Lesnar. Hello, everyone. Greetings. Greetings. Uh, spring. Spring's here. Um, you can tune into us on Channel 26 on Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 6.30 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday at 9 a.m. So you brought a guest. I did, yeah. I'd like yeah. to introduce Dana Marie Ruckert. Excited. Hi. Yeah, and Dana is an attorney mm-hmm. with Hoover Kripelka. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to learn a little bit more about what she does and how she helps folks. Sounds good. Very yeah. good. Yeah. So um, welcome. And the first thing we'd like to ask our guests is where you were maybe raised, uh, brought up, educated, and what brought you to, to this area? Sure. So I was actually born in San Francisco, and I grew up in the East Bay. So my parents still live in Danville. Okay. Uh, I did my education for undergrad at UC San Diego, and I went to USC Law for my law degree. Nice. I came back up here, I mean, because my family's here, and quite frankly, the Bay Area is the best place in the world to practice law because there's so many unique people here. It's such a wonderful place to really change the law and really think about how it evolves, so there's no better place to do it. Yeah, so from... um uh, a legal and, and practice sort of standpoint is a great place to be. How about just on a, on a personal level? What is it that keeps you here in the Bay Area? I think a big part of it is kind of the emotional bandwidth that I get from it. Being mm-hmm. around people who are so interactive, being in a community that has so many bright, young individuals, mm-hmm. young entrepreneurs, especially in the Silicon mm-hmm. Valley, mm-hmm. it makes doing my job a pleasure, and it makes being able to interact with those people on a personal level a pleasure as well. Okay, right. awesome. All right, Dana, um, so uh, family law. Yeah. How did you make that career selection? You know, it's funny. I never intended to go into family <laughs> law. You know, nobody sits there and is like, I want to be a divorce attorney <laughs> when I grow up, right? <laughs> right, right, right. Um, right. <laughs> I actually wanted to do government work. So okay, I started okay. off with the Department of Child Support Services, okay. which is a uh, governmental organization right. mm-hmm. that enforces support orders. Right. And unfortunately, because of some of the budget cuts, that wasn't going to be a long-term situation for me. So mm-hmm. once the budget cuts hit for Santa Clara County, I moved into private practice. And okay. the closest thing that I could get into was family law. Okay. So I've been doing private practice since then. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's been good. Uh-huh. Okay. So your, your the early part of your career then was um, looking at support issues and, and mm-hmm. family support. Uh, I imagine that's one of the issues that comes up in um, in a divorce. Sure. What, what, are, what are some of the other things that you look at or help folks as you um, look at a, a marriage that's dissolving? Sure. So I always tell people that divorce is really three concepts. Mm-hmm. It's your stuff, mm-hmm. it's your kids, and it's the money. So mm-hmm. with stuff, we're looking at assets and debts. How do we divide mm-hmm. those between the parties? Mm-hmm. With children, we're looking at custody issues. We're looking also importantly at co-parenting issues, making sure the parents, after you know the family has split, mm-hmm. that they have access to one another to be able to parent their children. Mm-hmm. And then support issues, we're talking about child support and then alimony spousal support. Okay. Well, so I did look at the website, and mm-hmm. I came up with it. Maybe this is what you're talking about, children property division and support yes being the issues mm-hmm. how do they differ though uh in terms of how you have to manage all three of those units sure so i will say the financial issues so asset division and support that's a very internal thing so we need information from our clients regarding their assets debts for support the primary issue is income that's available for that purpose things we deal with in the silicon valley especially we deal with issues of income above and beyond our regular w-2s so we're talking about our rsus we're talking about stock options we're talking about incentive pay like commission-based bonuses well and there's so much wealth in this valley that i suspect that that would be a very tenuous process too no oh, absolutely to go- And uh, one of the things that we're seeing a lot of these days is the courts reacting to that excessive wealth and Mm -hmm. courts putting limitations on people's ability to receive wealth from the former spouse. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. we're seeing a lot more of that. Okay, interesting. Because I think traditionally when you you think about a divorce situation, it's kind of community property and and 50-50. So you're seeing that that, that's the way the courts are approaching that's changing. Exactly. So, well, with regard to asset and debt division, there's a very specific way that we think about community versus separate. Community assets Mm -hmm. are things that are gained during the marriage, so your earnings during marriage, buy a home during marriage. Those are all generally going to be divisible in half. But separate property and support, the courts are starting to sit there and give 
separate property claims more credence than they used to. Wow. And they're starting to limit people's ability to receive support based on things like RSUs. Mm. Um, there's caps placed on child support now based on uh, whether or not the child's needs are being met by the support obligation. So is there any way, let's say in subsequent marriages, like sure. a second and third marriage, is there any way to protect those assets going into the marriage? Or I meant a prenuptial. Sure. But uh, maybe the way title is held? or Sure. So title does play a big part in California law, and we do caution our clients when they're thinking about premarital agreements. A big aspect of that is also making sure that they're having a close relationship with their probate attorney, making sure that their trusts and their wills are dealt with up mm -hmm. front to right. protect their exposure during a subsequent divorce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, when you think about a divorce, you, you think of, you know, oftentimes, at least I do, there's an adversarial mm -hmm. sort of relationship. I mean, that's, you know... You <laughs> so this is why you are still married and have not gotten a divorce. You're a smart man. I love that. But I guess my, my question is, I mean, are there things that folks can do? I know it's a, a very emotional process as well, so that it, it becomes more of a win situation, right? Sure. To, to help support people through that process. It's very difficult. Sure. So... One of the most important mm. things for me to tell my clients mm. is that it's not about the paperwork at the end of the day. It's about the self-care you're giving yourself outside of that. Mm -hmm. One of the first things you'll hear from me during any consultation is, what exactly are you doing for yourself right mm -hmm. now? Mm -hmm. How are you lining up your support Maybe system? offering mm. counseling services. Exactly. Mm. And, you know, we're very blessed to have a very good referral basis yeah. for yeah. those kind of mental health professionals yeah. as part of our practice. Mm -hmm. I also tell people, you know, the best way to come out of a divorce unscathed is honesty. So there's a concept in family law called uh, truth in divorce. Okay. We want people to be disclosing their assets, to be honest about the assets and the income that are out there. Mm -hmm. The adversarial positions come up when people aren't given full information, when we feel like we're not being given the full picture. Mm -hmm. So the more I can give the full picture to the other side, the more likely I am to come to a settlement where we don't need the intervention of the court because, quite frankly, we know what the court's going to do anyway. Okay. Good. And then uh, in terms of support, mm -hmm. and uh, how, how, how do those issues vary within that support, um, that, the, the total picture? Sure. So support issues are probably the most contentious issues. I actually thought mm -hmm. going into my career that it would be assets and debts. Who gets the house? Who gets the retirement right. accounts? But there's something very primal and emotional for people about paying mm -hmm. support. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, support issues are best dealt with by outside forensics. We use a mm -hmm. lot mm -hmm. of forensic accountants, um, some wonderful ones in the Bay Area that we work with all the time. And they actually make the process a lot more smooth because they are able to get to the crux of what income is available for purposes of support. Mm -hmm. And also the length of time for that support. Exactly. Yeah. Now, California makes the length of time for support a little bit of a complicated issue. I always say it's a term of art. It's not a term <laughs> of science. Um, because there are so many factors, especially in spousal support, that go into something like 18 factors that the court has to consider. Wow. Okay. Um, you know, I, I've heard of folks about, you know, do-it-yourself divorce. And what I'm hearing from you is that this is a very complex area of law. Mm -hmm. why, why is it that someone should seek out the help of a, a professional like you? If, if that's something that's part of their, uh, their reality. You know, I think the best thing that a lawyer can do for you is handhold. There's actually a lot of things that any individual can do to help themselves in divorce. But the fact of the matter is the law is so complex by itself and there's so many nuances that it's nearly impossible for somebody to figure them all out themselves. Mm -hmm. You as an attorney or me as an attorney, my job is to tell you the law and for you to give me the information that I can make my legal argument around. Well, and um, I, I suspect the client at the end of the day sort of makes his or her decisions. Mm -hmm. But you present maybe uh, the facts of mm -hmm. what, uh, or options, mm -hmm. options on what they can do. Absolutely. And, and let the client decide, make those final decisions. Exactly. And you can only guide so far, but. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, one of the uh, people I work with, Jim Hoover, he's one of our partners, wonderful guy, and he always says, my job is to educate you. Educate. And mm -hmm. I think that's something that can be lost sometimes in legal representation. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't just be barking orders. Uh -huh. We should tell you, here are your pros and your cons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think it takes a very talented advocate to be able to do that and still represent their client to their fullest capabilities. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you mentioned uh, Jim, who's one of the, the principals at Hoover Kropelka. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit about the Hoover Kropelka firm. Yeah, sure. So we're actually the largest family law firm in Northern California now. Oh. Mm -hmm. I believe we have 13 attorneys on staff okay. who are working day in, day out to make sure that our clientele is happy. Mm -hmm. uh, I've actually been fortunate to work with a number of family law firms, and I have to say what distinguishes Hoover Kropelka from other practices mm -hmm. is the level of collaboration and the concierge service service that we offer. The reality is a lot of attorneys are overburdened by their practice, especially if you're working with a sole practitioner. They're mm -hmm. doing everything themselves. Hoover's been able to create a good base model so that attorneys are able to give the kind of attention they need to to each case. Okay. 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 Terrific. You mentioned earlier uh, the skilled professionals that you work with, like the sure. for instance, for instance, accountants mm -hmm. and maybe uh, therapists, mm -hmm. counselors. Mm -hmm. Um, wh what other skilled professionals might you engage with? Sure. So one of the ones that we deal a lot with, and actually who we're dealing with a, a deficiency of right now, is custody evaluators. Especially in the Silicon Valley, we utilize professionals to make determinations or at least give us more information on custody evaluations mm -hmm. or through the custody evaluation process. Mm -hmm. um, these are all mental health professionals who have significant training in being able to speak with children, mm -hmm. in being able to glean the information that they need to mm -hmm. from other professionals like teachers, like mental health professionals, like medical professionals. Um, we deal a lot with them. Unfortunately, there's just a very limited supply wow. of them out there. There are yeah. a lot of people who are leaving that. I know for me recently I was dealing with a case and I needed a custody evaluator and I probably went through a list of 12 wow. and at least eight of them said no I'm no longer part of that game. It's just wow. it's too mentally taxing wow. for them at this yeah. point. So. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Well, um, what is it that, that you see as the challenges that, that you face as you're you know, helping clients through the, the process of the divorce? Sure. You know, I think one of the biggest problems that any attorney runs mm -hmm. into now is that there is a wealth of misinformation about the divorce process. And I find a good portion of the consults I do is simply tearing down people's images of what divorce is or what divorce isn't. Okay. Um, so are there some common misconceptions that folks have? Sure. I mean, one of the most common misconceptions that I see is what's a divorce versus a legal separation. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who come and say, I want a legal separation, thinking okay. that it's functionally different than a divorce. Mm -hmm. The reality is legal separation and divorce are virtually identical other than the fact that at a legal sep end of a legal separation, you're still married. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So we fight against Google every day, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So um, you must get some rewards. You, you're yeah. smiling. You sit here <laughs> smiling. I don't think I would want to walk in your shoes, but what kind of rewards do you get from your career? You know, I, I hesitate to put a number on it, but there's a very small percentage of cases in any attorney's life that really impact them. Mm -hmm. I think my percentage and the percentage for family law attorneys is significantly higher because we do deal with people at the very worst times in their life. Mm -hmm. And we are able to provide a level of comfort and security in, mm -hmm. a, in a changing world for them. For me, being able to do that, especially with regard to people who are dealing with a divorce and dealing with children, mm -hmm. um, it's so important that you take care of them and to be able to give that level of empathy to somebody. Mm -hmm and still do your job as an advocate is difficult. But when you do it right and somebody just calls you up and says, hey, thank you, it means the world. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, you, and you, you, know, you kind of talk about balance. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, for yourself, I, I noticed that you play softball. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I missed that. I, I wasn't sure if she was the one or if somebody else was supposed to ask yeah. to. Oh, let's hear about the softball. <laughs> let's hear about it. What do you do? I got to hear. <laughs> so I actually, I've been a sports person since I was a nice. little girl. My dad co coached my softball team in nice. Danville. And about three and a half years ago, a good friend of mine called me up and he said, look, I got I have some space on my team right now. Do you want to do you want to come play? And I was like, oh, gosh, I haven't picked up a bat <laughs> in 10 odd years. But why not? But I ended up finding a wonderful group of people. Uh -huh. We actually play in the Oakland Recreational League. Mm -hmm. um, 
every Thursday night. It's just the kind of thing you want to make time for. Oh, you know? sure, and plus, if you're a lawyer, you want to hit something. <laughs> and, and <laughs> what, what position do you play? Uh, I will play second base most of the time. Nice. You must have a good arm. I do okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Terrific. Right. Um, aside from that, kind of, what are some of your personal goals, objectives you have? You know, personally... Gosh, I'm getting married, so I gotta start oh, yeah. planning my wedding. <laughs> That's a big thing. <laughs> but you know, personally, busy. I, uh, you have no idea. Uh, but you know, personally, it's just about attaining that life balance because I'm a better, I'm a better person for my fiance. I'm a better person for my family, and I'm a better person for my clients when I'm getting the emotional uh, reward from every aspect of that. And right. it makes a job that is by its very nature an emotional maelstrom mm -hmm. bearable every day. Wow. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you know your business, <laughs> and I hope you have a, a long... You, you'll, be, uh, you'll be treating your clients very well, and I'm sure that they're going to appreciate you. You sound like you really have a good handle on everything that you do and thanks for taking the time oh, thank you yeah. for inviting Come me yeah, yeah we appreciate you being here now just in case folks might have questions that they might want to reach out to you how might uh, folks get in contact with you sure so uh my firm is hoover Kripelka. we can be found online at hooverkripelka.com you okay. can also call we do give free consultations which mm -hmm. is a rarity especially in the silicon valley yeah but our uh, founder bob hoover thought that part of our job is not only to bring in money, but it's to serve those people to some extent who don't have the ability to sure. yeah. retain legal services. So you can also call our firm at 408-947-7600. Terrific. Dean Marie, thanks so much for being our guest Thank today. you so Thank much, you. Todd. Thank you. Thank you. there. Welcome to Valley Homes on TV. I'm Debbie and the Hard Giordano. Along with Todd Flesner. Welcome to Valley Homes on TV. Yeah, we're glad to see you folks. So we're going to have kind of a special uh, session here. Todd and I want to give you kind of a snapshot on where the local market is and maybe a little crystal ball and maybe where things are going. So um, how's, how are you doing? Um, yeah, things are going well. We're you know here in the first quarter of the, the new year, 2019. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's been an interesting sort of market for us. I think there's been, from what I can see, a lot of interest for folks, um, you know, getting into, the, getting into real estate, buying, right? The, the buyers really are, are coming out, I think, earlier than we typically have seen. I think that would be true, yes. Uh -huh. So um, i just share with you, of course, you know, I just really know the Milpitas market yes. and some of the Berryessa area. And I've been going to our local breakfast meetings okay. on the local area here. And what they're, what I'm hearing over and over is that we're actually in a, our own uh, marketplace right here within Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. Malpitas is on fire. I mean, it, it turned out just because of the location of where the city is. You're near three freeways, future BART coming in, mm -hmm. all the shopping that's available. The schools are great. I mean, Melpitas market is on fire. You give you a good example. I did an open house last weekend uh, for a nine hundred and fifty thousand dollars priced home in Melpitas. Had ninety to a hundred uh, groups through over the weekend. That's a lot of foot traffic. That's a lot of foot traffic. And eight out eight offers later, we sold it for a million and sixty this afternoon. That is, uh, yeah, that is a hot market. Absolutely. And again, early in the season. It, right, right. We right. don't usually see that until April or May, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I, of course, see folks as they're thinking about buying right. the, the pre-approval process. And, uh, you know, likewise, I'm seeing a lot of interest in folks in, in what's happening in the market here and the opportunity to get in. Now, part of this, because interest rates have stayed nice and low. Um, there had been some speculation that you know, the Fed could be raising interest rates, it would be an increasing interest rate market, and that just hasn't panned out yet. It's been nice and stable. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so folks, I think, are looking to take advantage of Take advantage of, that. of it. I would tend to agree. And you know, we've said this before on the show, but um, in my estimation, it was about April of last year mm -hmm. that we hit peak 
Right. That was like peak value. Mm -hmm. And then I saw a decline over the last eight months of about six to eight months over 150 to maybe $200,000 descent. Okay. Uh, and then now that is picked back up. I think we've gained every bit of that descent back. Mm -hmm. And it's it's getting fire now, and it's going. Okay, forward. so your crystal ball. What do you see? For My the crystal ball <laughs> says, that with with that many buyers, qualified buyers, looking at open houses, mm -hmm. you're you're going to be in a great spot as a seller to command your price. Okay. That that's my crystal ball, and I think that's going to hold true for the most of the year. Mm -hmm. um, there's a article I can share with you that I uh, picked out of the San Jose Mercury. It's dated March first. And the headline is Bay Area Home Sales Slow as Prices Shift Back into High Gear. Okay. So it's already uh, showing itself, you know, uh, that the pricing is, is definitely what's there. And then um, uh, I always like to share the MLS numbers and yes. we can look at pricing there. In February 2018, uh, our pricing was a million two hundred and ten thousand for an average price in Milpitas. But again, that was before the peak. The peak went to about one three, one three five zero, and now uh, we've recaptured most of that because the medium or average price in February of 2019 is one million one hundred and forty nine thousand. And if you recall, about two months ago, that fell down to about nine hundred and fifty thousand. That's right. So um, we're we're to, we're we're back to where we need to be on on an average price home. So okay, and how how about the condo market? How's the condo oh, market? Oh yeah, well, certainly. Uh, don't want to forget about them. Uh, Nine hundred and uh, forty one thousand was February twenty eighteen, and oh boy, that that has dropped. Um, last month, February twenty ninth, it's down to seven hundred and sixty thousand, and again, that may be because of the the. All the supply, mm -hmm. the supply side is so high for the condos. Right. I had expected. It seemed like that was artificially in, inflated last year, because. Of, but the supply is now kicked into gear. All this new construction that's right, is that popping was up. Be my question is, yeah, the new construction, everything that's this being built at this point in time really is that style of home. And I'm finding buyers that can qualify around this point mm -hmm. are able to jump in and get a single family home okay. which they would prefer rather than a condo. So um, it, it, it'll it it'll pick back up too. Okay. Well, you know, that's always the trade-off, right? I think folks, they can they prefer if they can to get into single family if they can't then no no HOA that's right um, you're able to do what you want to do with the house paint it purple I guess mm -hmm. if you want to um, <laughs> don't don't quote don't don't do that not if you want to sell <laughs> not if you want to sell yeah um, we'll be repainting that house um, but you know I mean it's in got a place for the kids you got a two-car garage you know maybe walking distance to the schools where the condos don't offer you know as much as that and so, uh, yeah, um, you know, um, it, it's still great. Milpitas is just an unbelievable market right now that I'm hearing from all, all sources. Well, terrific. But it's, it's great to hear the strength of that and the attractiveness of, of our community here. Um, so where do you see interest rates going? You know, um, again, the, the projection going into the year was a right, uh, increasing interest rate um, environment. And... Um, we're just seeing things pretty much steady state. There are some early sign indicators that um, that we could see an economic slowdown somewhere on the horizon. And one of the things that we look at is the, the yield curve spread. That's the spread between the two-year treasury and the 10-year treasury, short-term and long-term rates. And as those two rates return flatten or get closer to one another, that's an early sign of economic slowdown. Now, that's not imminent right now, but historically when we look back, that that's usually one of the, the leading indicators. Uh, you know, so perhaps sometime in the next year or so, uh, but for the time being, you know, employment remains strong. Um, you know, the, the Fed has uh, remained stable with their interest rate policy. Going into the year, it was thought that, that we could see two to three year uh, interest rate increases by the Fed. Uh, they've changed their stance on that to really be more neutral mm -hmm. at this point in mm -hmm. time and taking a wait-and-see approach to what happens with economic growth. 
How do you see the local economy right here in Silicon Valley? I mean, yeah. job growth was good. Just what last week they yeah. posted job gains again. Mm -hmm. What What do you see? I guess the high, all fueled by the high tech industry. Well, yeah. I mean, high tech is what drives our um, job market here, and uh, you know, tech is still doing well. Um, you know, when we look back at some of the, the numbers in terms of where the, the market went, you know, you can also correlate that to what happened in the stock market. Last October, end of the year, we saw a decrease in the stock market, in the market and there was a little bit of jitteriness around that. Exactly. Um, and so I, I think that we're through that. The market has responded. Tech stocks are, are doing fine at this point in time. The employment remains strong there. And that's one of the, the things that's going to support the housing market as well, as long as we have a strong job market. Now, an interesting thing is, is we look at outflow migration as well. And we're starting to see a lot of outflow migration. It's just going to, yes, um, throw that into in the equation of mm -hmm. the properties I'm listing. I've got clients going to Idaho. Mm -hmm. One client going to Washington, state of Washington, one to Texas. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're definitely mo not just moving in California, but out of state. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, some of that is uh, gentrification where, you know, folks have been in their homes for a right. number of years right. and are looking to retire, right. perhaps to a more tax-friendly state right. or, you know, a little bit and less. And take, take the equity out mm -hmm. and uh, they can cash out, right. buy another home for 50%, mm -hmm. 60% less than what they ha owe here. Put the money in the bank, right? Right. Cost of living, Cost of living. Is, is a little bit less in some of those other areas, and um, you know the the job markets aren't the same as what's here, and that's what drives our. But our they local won't need economy. that. They as won't a need retirees. that exactly. Exactly. Um, and then you know, there are some some tech outflow as well as tech begins to expand geographically into other areas. Right. You know Texas, Arizona, right. Idaho. Right. You know in the Reno area with uh, with Tesla and some of the other right. employers that are there that are We're, pulling out some of these right. millennium uh, mm -hmm. people. What yeah. or. Um, Folks that could not afford, afford to buy here mm -hmm. have a chance maybe moving out and Absolutely. getting a property. Yeah, so that's, you know, the... Um that's the maturing of the tech sector, sector, and you know, being able then to to look at other regions that they can then relocate some of their staffing. Well, to. and that's good. That frees up some inventory. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but Helps. you know, this still also is a is a attractor for folks in the tech field. You know, looking for jobs, and so there's a balance between the out you know, the out migration with the demand for folks who, who want to live here. So, uh, where are current rates at, say today? Current interest rates um, actually are, are historically outstanding. Um, we're in the, the low to mid fours for most um, loans. I'm doing arms now in the three um, percent, mid threes, wow. depending upon, you know, again, credit and equity mm -hmm. and those sort of things. But interest rates are tremendous, so it's a great time to Good. to look into perhaps refinancing, if, you know, if that's an option that you might want to look at. Um, also a great time to get pre-approved. Um, I have some great low-down payment options. That so what might be a trigger for someone to do a refinance, say? What, what's kind of the litmus test you go yeah, through? Yeah, there, there are a couple things. One, you know, we'll, we'll take a look at what their current rate is on their, on their current first mortgage. But do they have an equity line okay. of credit? All right. Which can go, uh, that's an uncontrollable interest rate. Those correct? are adjustable. Adjustable. And over the last couple of years, those have gone up a couple of percent from where they had been. So if you've had an, um, an equity line over the last couple of years, um, I will take a look at what the blended rate is mm -hmm. of your first and your second mm -hmm. mortgage and what can we do with that. Um, or perhaps you have credit card or other debt that okay. you might be able to benefit by consolidating that. And we know the values are up, mm -hmm. so there's plenty of equity now. There's, there's plenty of equity. Uh, or folks that had a low down payment and perhaps they had mortgage insurance. Oh, nice. Um, it's a great time to look at that. Um, or maybe they bought with an FHA loan because okay. their credit was mm -hmm. maybe marginal at that point in time. And because they've now had a home loan and had good payment history, their credit has improved. Okay, and it great. Might be a good time there's, to, some, there's a lot of reasons then to look at that. There's always, you know, it's, it's always a good thing. You know, we, we think about 
um, what we have in the bank and in the stock market and managing that side of our balance sheet, right? The asset part of it. Mm -hmm. But it's just as important to manage the other side of your balance the sheet. The debt side. The debt side. The, the liabilities. And so that's what I hope. Of course, it's always do. good not to have any, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> isn't that, isn't it's that it's the like, name of the game? Yeah. Get rid of all those. It, it is. But, yeah. um, you know, <coughs> to, Excuse me. You know, but to look at your debt and be able to manage that in a way that is um, that's smart for what your objectives are, right? And what your partic particular current situation is. All right. So. Good. So um, if folks need to reach you uh, to yeah. talk about. You know, portfolios, refinancing. It sounds like you're more than just a loan person. You're a financial advisor, too. Well, yeah, I, I try to help people look strategically mm -hmm. at their financial lives and, and, and the piece that real estate financing plays in that. I know you've helped our family. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I've helped. So, you had the opportunity, good, uh, good fortune to help lots of folks and um, appreciate the opportunity yeah. to help your family as well. Yeah. But, um, you yeah, know, my website, toddflesner.com, is a great place to go. Cell phone, email is there. Okay. Um, okay, great. And then, and then uh, I can be reached. Uh, I'll, I'll give my website, yeah, debbiegiordano.com, right. for, for every, all the contact information there. And then you're going to have a guest uh, in, in two weeks. It's a divorce attorney yes. coming in. Yes. Sounds exciting. Uh, talk about a lot of things. And, of course, relative to property values and Someone. Well, absolutely. If you know, if someone is in a situation where they're going through a divorce, or perhaps have been divorced, you know that can impact um, what they do with real estate. Absolutely. You know, do they hold on to it? Do they sell it? Can they purchase again? Um, and so there's a lot of planning that goes oh, into good. that. That'll and be exciting. So okay. we'll, we'll talk about that and Thanks, look forward Tom. to having uh, Travis okay, Kropelka great. with us yeah. to talk about that. Great. Thank you very much for watching Valley Homes on TV, and we'll see you in a couple weeks.